Hey, what's up guys? This is Aaron from Fingtam Languages and I'm with Tommaso. How's it going? From uh, Esperanto Variety Show. Yep. Or do you prefer to go by Thomas in English? It, well, it's, it, that's a good question. <laughs> uh, people, people do call me Thomas mm -hmm. um, and Tommaso is fine as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. He has another channel on YouTube. Um, it's in, mostly about, well, it's about Esperanto. Yep. It's not all in Esperanto, yep. but um, so if you don't speak Esperanto, I would still recommend going and checking out I his channel. I have a playlist called English Speakers Start Here. So. Ah, perfect. <laughs> yes, so I definitely uh, am very happy to support all other Esperanto YouTubers mm -hmm. um, because I strongly believe in Esperanto and I really want to help spread the word. So yeah. if I can help other people do that, then awesome. So I highly recommend checking out his yeah. channel. Um, we're doing this video for my Storytime Saturday uh, video series. Mm -hmm. So. I just wanted to talk to Thomas about some of his experiences learning Esperanto mm -hmm. over what, the last 20 years? Yeah, just over 20 years, yeah. Yeah, so um, I think we just have a lot that we can learn from other yeah. language learners, especially when they've been doing it for so long. So. so the first time I heard about Esperanto, my reaction was, what loser? <laughs> what loser would take the time to, to write out this text in a language that nobody's going to read? Yeah. Um, but that was enough to get me curious to say, well, who actually does write, who does, does use Esperanto, and mm -hmm. what is Esperanto like? Um, I was aware at the time that Esperanto was an invented language, but I didn't know a lot about it, and I didn't really know what, um, what was involved in inventing a language. Right. Um, I didn't know that such a thing was possible, um, and what, what really hooked me in, what got me to try it was more, as much an act of defiance as anything else, was the claim <laughs> that you could learn Esperanto in a quarter of the time that it takes to learn another language. Oh, yeah. Um, I had already completed a minor in German at that time. Mm. Um, and of course, that helped because uh, a lot of the grammatical concepts were already yeah. familiar. The right? accusative. Yep. And, <laughs> and uh, what a preposition. That's the that hard. Yeah. And, yeah. Once you've learned the accusative, you can learn anything. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so I've had a lot of fun with it over the years. My um, my wife uh, had and I we were fair, relatively newlyweds, and I came home and I told her about Esperanto. Uh, she had been working on German, and that mm -hmm. was a little bit uncomfortable for us because, you know, she was my wife, but then I was like acting like a teacher. Oh, yeah. And that was a little awkward. Yeah. Um, and I said, well, we can learn it together. And she's like, oh, I think that's stupid. <laughs> uh, so yeah. I started learning without her, and she's like, what are you doing? Oh, you yeah. said we were going to do this together. Oh, yeah. And so, yeah, so we've had, uh, we started out with, a, with an email course, and then... Um, our goal was to get to the point where we could use what's called the Passport de Servo. Oh, yeah. Which is a hospitality service mm -hmm. um, for Esperanto speakers. Um, I actually was just reading about couch serving, serving the other day. I was thinking couch surfing probably sort of got rid of, made, made Esperanto obsolete, but I found out that couch surfing had kind of has come and gone. It's, oh, it's, really? It's, 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 yeah, so. Okay. I've used both, but yeah. I, I didn't, hadn't heard that. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's, uh, or at least certainly the, the, the enthusiasts of. Of um, couch surfing or not? Couch yeah. surfing or not? Just, a, maybe excited. for just for those who aren't fam familiar with Esperanto culture, uh, the pasporta servo is essentially couch surfing for Esperantists with conversation. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I, I think it, um, you know, it long predates couch surfing. At yeah. least the couch surfing yeah, app. Yeah, nineteen seventy four. Yeah, so you go to a new city. You know, I've I was traveling to Ireland. I was traveling to Canada, and I find other Esperantists who live in the area mm -hmm. and you know yep. and I was just able to stay with them for free and yep. you, you practice your Esperanto and it's a good time yeah 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 so, so we went to Belgium and Netherlands and stayed with different uh, individuals there mm -hmm. um, sometimes families and uh, got to see a side of the world that we would not have gotten to see otherwise yeah um, and then although you know at the time we were still fairly new um, at, the, at the language and you know we still had to People were finishing our sentences mm, for yeah. us, or, or you know, how do you say this word, right? That sort of thing. Mm. Or um, you putting an N at the end of your sentence. Oh, I never, I never got that wrong. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, you never got the accusative wrong. You're, you, you're the god, the true god. It's not evil, <laughs> Uh Yeah. So um, yeah. So it's been fun. We um, and then somewhere along the line, we made the nutty decision to speak Esperanto as a home language. Oh. Um, and that that changed things a lot because mm -hmm. you know it comes from something that you do just you know once every several weeks or whatever, a couple months yeah. or you know on the maybe a pen pal or whatever 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 we had at the time. 
uh, to just something that's part of your daily routine. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing is that I felt like I owed it to my children to be extremely fluent in the language so that I wouldn't ever hesitate. You know, because right. because you want that you want that you want children to grow up in a rich environment, mm -hmm. and you don't want the decision to use to have a second language at home to make you want to speak less, right? So I really kind of went a little over the deep end in learning Esperanto. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, so how how fluent or how far do you have to be before it becomes a realistic goal to actually start speaking Esperanto in the home? When I was in, uh, I was living in El Salvador, and I had a lot of Salvadoran friends, but I also had American friends, and we made, a, we kind of made a pact that we would only speak Spanish with one another, yep. and that fell apart, yep. like, uh, two days later. Yep. So, how did that go? So, actually, surprisingly well, um, but I think related to that, it's funny, because now my wife and I, we speak all English with each other, mm -hmm. and so we're here at, Na at NASC, where everybody's... We're, um, have we mentioned that in the video yet? We're here in, in North Carolina for the es for an Esperanto yeah, summer school. That's why we're here together. And uh, yeah, so and everybody, everybody everywhere is speaking Esperanto, and yet I feel like I want to speak Esperanto with my wife. So when we're walking along, I'm always speaking I mean, I'm in English. I'm always speaking mm -hmm. English with my wife. And it's funny because I like I was talking to her the other day in English, and I, I, I listed out a bunch of names. Mm -hmm. of people we were talking about, and then that was enough to get me switching to Esperanto. <laughs> Switch the flip, yeah. Because they, they were all Esperanto names that I said, and then I started speaking like her in Esperanto. I didn't even realize I'd changed yeah. languages. Well, it's really funny. I I have not, I I have almost not, how would you say this in English? I have almost not crocodilied. <laughs> I have not crocodiled <laughs> right. yet. Uh, those of you who speak Esperanto will understand. Um, I almost have not crocodiled at all the whole time that we were here, um, except for this morning, I was sitting in class, we were on break, mm -hmm. and I was reading something in English, and then I walked out, and this girl was walking past me, and I said, good morning, because I had been reading something in English. Right. And then all of a sudden, I said, oh, no, yeah. mi crocodilis. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so, um, you know, it's just funny how little things like that can, mm -hmm. can switch. Yeah. So, um, yeah, but if you see us, so what it's like to speak Esperanto at home. Um, so one thing is that with my, you know, I mostly spoke Esperanto to my, my children from when they were born, right? So to me, that, that was that was a habit that I that I started right from the beginning. Yeah. Um, and for different reasons, we stopped. I don't know if I want to get into that right now. It becomes a long story. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, it went pretty well. Um, and I also, also at the time, I found that I automatically spoke Esperanto to cats. Ah. Anything sort of small. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think one of the you know for people who are not familiar with Esperanto, and I start telling them about. You know how many people speak it, and mm -hmm. how there's movies and books and songs in Esperanto. Yep. One of the things that first blows their mind is that there's actually native speakers yep. in Esperanto. Mm -hmm. So I mean, uh, I don't know. It's it's something that uh, you just don't normally think of as being a possibility. Oh, right. You know, but yeah. um, it's it's really it's a culture. Mm -hmm. It's uh, kind of a mindset, I guess. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. People come from all over, and man, I don't know. There, there's just something about Esperanto speakers, right. where um, I think you have to be a certain kind of person to want to start learning a constructed language. Well, I think I think that's it. It's it's the the Esperanto is something that doesn't. That it's I don't know. That it's necessarily the idealism, but you know that people are learning it because because they want to talk to people, right? They're learning it because they're interested right. in some of the ideas behind it, or they just like they like languages in general, mm -hmm. right? So you you can't make a lot of assumptions, but there are a lot of sort of general things that tend to follow the decision to learn Esperanto or tend to go along with it. Sure. That and anyone who decides to learn Esperanto probably just is not afraid of yeah. other people thinking they're weird, yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, so, I guess, you know, the video is 10 minutes long. Um, we've covered uh, most of the stuff that I want to talk about. Is there anything else you want to share? Any no, other it's, experiences? Uh, it's, been, it's nice to get to, get to know you. I've been watching your channel and yeah. I watched some of your marathon, uh, <laughs> marathon time learning, learning stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, uh, it's, uh, oh, and by the way, he's a lot taller in person than he looks on camera. <laughs> yes, he makes me look small <laughs> in this video. Um, I'm six foot four, though. Yeah. <laughs> So um, yeah, we've, we've kind of been uh, corresponding back and forth yep. for quite a while now, but this is actually the first time we've ever met in person. Mm -hmm. So uh, thanks for watching the video, and uh, hopefully we will do more correspondence, more uh, collaborative work sometime Excellent. in the future. Sounds good. Yep.
All right, see ya. Bye.